top travel experts have some predictions about 2021 travel and it looks like it's going to be a busy travel season. RV dealers have picked what they consider the most reliable brands. There's a new RV GPS app solution coming to the market and five top travel experts have predictions for what 2021 travel will be like. It's going to be a busy travel season. It's time for the RV and camping news. I'm Jason Epperson, this is the RV Miles channel, and here we talk about the latest in RV and camping news and how it affects you, the consumer. I wanna start out today by talking about the Togo app. Togo, it's spelled T-O-G-O, and yes, I'm pronouncing it right. It is named after a famous sled dog, and it is not short for to go. It's Togo. The Togo RV app is sort of a great solution for you to put in a lot of information about your RV and store things like checklists for winterization and for opening up in the spring and all the recurring maintenance needs that you have for an RV. You can put them into these handy checklists and the RV manufacturers can also put their own checklists in for your rig. It's a super handy thing. They also have lots of videos and articles about operating your RV. And Togo is owned by Thor Industries, which is the largest RV manufacturer in the world. They own Keystone and a whole bunch of other brands. And they have sort of built this Togo group, uh, which also owns Road Trippers, which is one of my favorite road trip planning apps. It allows you to sort of find things along a route very easily. The Togo app is free to download and it has that stuff I talked about. But the Togo Plus app, so you pay an additional subscription. And when you do that, you get access to Road Trippers Plus as well. It's included and sort of baked in with it. You also get a lot more of that sort of article video type information. Togo's doing a lot of stuff right now to expand their offerings. And the thing that they recently just announced is they're adding after the holidays, a brand new RV specific GPS built in to the Togo app. In the past, you were able to do turn by turn directions on the Road Trippers app, but it was a little bit limited. The new Togo navigation is going to allow you to put in the length, width, height, weight of your RV and get turn by turn directions that are specifically orientated to RV driving, which is great because there's not a lot of app solutions out there to do that. One that was released earlier this year was through the RV Life Network. They own RV Trip Wizard, and which is a great online planning app. And for the longest time, it was only available on desktop. And now it's sort of integrated into their navigation app as well. So that's another sort of competing option out there. But in the past, there haven't been a lot of great RV options for navigation through an app unless you wanted to use one of the trucker apps out there. And the thing about that is, is those throw you on just the trucker routes, the, the routes that are okay for semi trucks. Your rig might be a lot smaller than a semi truck. You may be able to go on more of those routes. Those routes also will stop routing in places like Yellowstone National Park where semi trucks aren't supposed to drive through the park. So it's really great to have the option for something that will allow you to put in that specific information and tailor your directions to your needs. And I've talked to both the people that have worked on the RV Life app and RV Trip Wizard and the people that are working on creating the navigation app for Togo. And there's so much that goes into providing these turn by turn directions and to do it in a way that makes it user friendly and something that you're actually going to use instead of reverting back to Google. And now that a lot of people have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto so that they can actually put those apps up onto their navigation screen, it's an exciting time for GPS apps. And I think these two apps are actually gonna be really good at, at this. And I, I at least have a lot of hope that, that they will. I haven't had a lot of chance to play with RV Life yet, and I know RV Life is making some big changes to theirs as well, and it's going to be releasing some changes to their app after the new year as well. RV Life is about 50 bucks a year. Uh, Togo, I think, is about 40 bucks a year. And RV Life has a free seven-day trial period, whereas Togo is going to offer the RV navigation free initially in its beta version once it's released. There are some other really interesting things that are happening right now with Togo. They just let me know that they're adding safety recall alerts 
to the app. So once you've entered the information about your rig, it will alert you when there's a recall for your rig. There's also the ability for mechanics at RV dealerships to be able to put in information tied to your rig about the work that they did on it. So you can go into the app and see when work was performed and you know what the follow-up steps are. Or you can even go in and look and see while they're working on it, some updates to it. It's a really great thing and it's not just for Thor brands. This is an app that's available for any brands to use, but Thor has also gone and made specific versions of this for a lot of their individual brands. The other big announcement that Togo just made is that they just acquired the R Village social network. R Village is a really cool thing that lots and lots of full-time RVers and lots of RVers that travel quite a bit use, where you can actually make social connections. You can check in the campground that you're in and say, I'm here. You can. You don't have to say exactly what site you're in or anything like that and sort of meet people and there's all sorts of different groups. It's kind of like the Facebook for RVers. Now, Togo owns that and one can only expect that they will be integrating that into the app in some sort of way. So if you wanna check out the Togo app, it's free to download and you can play with a lot of the features, but if you do wanna to upgrade to the Togo Plus version, they've given us a discount code to hand to you. It's RV Miles 10X, that's RV Miles 10X. That gives you $10 off that first year. Next up, the RV Dealers Association, which is obviously an association of the RV dealers across the country, has come out with its 26th annual Dealer Satisfaction Index survey, which is sort of, they survey all the dealers across the country and they find out which brands are performing the best in terms of dealer support and customer support. Obviously, dealers are trying to sell us these RVs, so you can take this with a grain of salt, but also, Dealers have a vested interest in you having a good experience with the product that makes them look good and it gives them less work to do when they sell you the product and then it's got to be returned for recall repairs. So these are the top 10 brands in alphabetical order that scored a 4.25 out of 5 or higher on this survey for four areas, reliability and quality, parts, warranty, and sales. The top towable brands receiving awards are in alphabetical order, Airstream, Cruiser RV, Dutchman's Aspen Trail and Kodiak, East to West's Alta, Forest Rivers, Flagstaff Travel Trailers, Fifth Wheels and Shamrock Expandables. Expandables are pop-up trailers or hybrids. Rockwood Travel Trailers, Fifth Wheels and Rockwood Rue Expandables. Grand Designs, Imagine, Momentum, Reflection, Solitude and Transcend Line. Palomino's Puma River Travel Trailers and fifth wheels. The motorized RV products receiving awards are Airstream, Coachman, Scaleria, Beyond, and Nova Class Bs, Leisure Travel Brands, and Triple E, which are the same company, and Newmar and Tiffin Motorhomes. Well, what is 2021 travel going to look like and beyond? That question was pondered the other day on a Zoom call with five top travel industry experts that I attended that was for a bunch of reporters, including GQ and the New York Times, a lot of people interested in RV travel and travel in general, what Americans are going to do next year. And the big message out of this is 2021 is going to be a banner travel year. Not only is it going to be a big travel year, people are traveling differently and they're going to continue to travel differently. And I spell this all out with quotes from these folks in an article I wrote for RVBusiness.com, which I will link to in the description as well. And you can check that out, please do, because it goes into a lot more detail than I'm about to, but generally the gist of it is there's a lot of pent up demand. Only 40% of people who normally travel, traveled last year. And a lot of them already had vacations already booked, already planned. So they're going to be able to just take that planning and move it to next year without any sort of planning phase. And there's a lot of stored value in the system. A lot of credits that people banked when they canceled their vacations, credits for airline travel, credits for campgrounds and hotels that are going to be cashed in on next year. Additionally, only 20% of the American white collar workforce is back in offices. And a lot of those people are never going to return. Work from home and work from anywhere types of jobs are going to become more and more normal as a lot of these companies are deciding 
hey, we don't need to have the expenditure of a big office building anymore. We just made this work during a pandemic. We can just make it work permanently. So what that means is that people are able to book longer trips. Instead of going to a cabin for four nights, they can go out for a week and a half because they can do some work while they're out there. So that pent up demand combined with more and more work from home opportunities, even if the economy shrinks, even if people have less and less money, it's still going to mean there's going to be a lot more road trip travel, especially in America next year. People will return to airlines and they will return to hotels, but international travel is not going to be as big. And frankly, RVing is here to stay. These experts agreed that RVing is no longer this niche form of travel. It's mainstream now. It's, it's not something that a lot of people did last year because they couldn't do something else. They're going to continue to RV. And that's going to mean that campgrounds in particular are going to need to meet their demands. People are going to want much more connectivity next year and in the future. In fact, Lee Wetzel, one of the founders of Campendium, one of the biggest campground review websites, says that the vast majority of the people that are searching for campgrounds on campendium.com are looking for that connectivity information. And if you wanna get away from crowds next year, the best thing you can do is go where there's no cell service. People are also booking a lot more last minute. The average booking window was about 60 days in the past, that shrunk to about 30 days. So campgrounds are going to need to increase their connectivity options if they don't wanna get left behind. And I know a lot of people say, I go camping to get away from it all, I don't want the connectivity, I don't want Wi-Fi, that stuff's not important to me. That's great, but for a lot of people, it's going to allow them to extend their vacations. It doesn't mean that they're going to camp to get on the internet, but they can camp longer because internet is there and available to them. It's going to be really important for campgrounds who, let's be honest, have not been the greatest in this area. Travelers are also looking for a lot more flexibility. They want to know refund policies. They want to know that the refunds are going to be easy to get. They want to know what kind of fees they're gonna be charged because they wanna be able to cancel their vacation last minute or change dates or whatever they have to do because their lives are becoming more and more flexible. Where they move about the country is becoming more and more flexible. And if the pandemic flares up or some other unforeseen thing causes them to cancel their vacation in the future, they're going to want to be able to change it. A lot of them learned that lesson early last year when their vacations were canceled and some hotels and campgrounds and airlines were not giving them refunds. They don't want to get bit by that again. So flexibility is going to become super important. Vacations are going to get longer. They're going to be closer to home and a lot of people plan to travel next year. That's it for the latest in RV and camping news. If you got something out of this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification bell so you can get notified anytime we put information out like this. We also talked in a lot more detail about 2021 travel on the RV Miles podcast this week, which you can find on any podcast app or also right here on YouTube on the video version on this channel. Thanks for watching. And now let's read some comments from our last video, which was our monthly news from the parks episode. I would rather watch your news every day at 5 p.m. than the local news. Thank you very much for what you do. Learn so much. Thanks so much, Joanne. Okay, the content here is different, interesting, and straightforward. I subbed. Thank you so much, Chip. Glad to have you here. Your channel is a hit with me. Great job. Thank you, Red Ted. That background music detracts from your voice. Choosing something less frenetic will improve your likes. Otherwise, great content. Well, thanks for the opinion. Other people said they only come here for the music, so I don't know what to do. I was going to critique your video, however, I developed a headache while I was attempting to dissect every word, noun, and syllable, so I just decided to sit back and partake in the informational and entertainment aspects of it. Thank you. Dandy Dan is being facetious there. Thanks, Dan, Thanks, Dan for being here. Great report. Thanks for mentioning the Yosemite Conservancy of which we are members. They do a heck of a job with outreach to communities of color and tracking endangered species. And a lot of people chiming in about that death from that gate that swung in the wind, slicing through a car killing a Ugandan activist. Whether it's a gate or a tree in the wind, you need to be aware and ready. I'm sure that the gate was visually indicative of the instability. You can't expect a helicopter parent to be around everywhere. A lawsuit like this will just lead to shut down everything and it will be a worse nanny state. This is why there are handrails and safety chains in Yosemite at Nevada Vernal Falls. People need to take personal responsibility and that includes 
reality that shit happens. I don't know, if somebody didn't secure a gate and it sliced through my car and decapitated my wife, I think I'd be filing a lawsuit too. See you next time.